Did you know that quantum computers can speed up Bitcoin mining? Yes, I didn't know this either until recently. It's not a huge speed up, but you can probably make money with it. And a lot of big banks, including Bank of America, bank on quantum computing too, because they think it will give them an edge in trading. That can make a lot of money very quickly. But as I've said previously, I don't think we'll see any practically useful quantum computers in the next 10 years, if ever. It's because while we have some small quantum computers, I think it'll be very, very difficult to scale them up without spending trillions of dollars on it. At least that's what I used to think. But would you know it, this week we have not one but two plans for how to scale up quantum computers to a size that'll make rich people even richer. And who wouldn't want that? So let's have a look. The major reason I'm skeptical that quantum computers can be scaled up is that not enough thought has been given to the problem. I mean, IBM's great plan for scaling up is basically building the biggest ever cryogenic fridge and then what, I wonder? Frozen hamsters for everyone? IBM uses superconducting circuits as qubits that are the basic units of computation. It's been clear for some while now that these will be particularly difficult to scale, not least because they require temperatures of a few millikelvin. Just for context, that's really cold. But in recent years, we've seen several other approaches with different qubits catch up quickly. It's a very interesting public-private race that I've talked about several times before. And now we have the first plan to scale up quantum computers that comes from a group at MIT. It was published in Nature just the other day and reports that they have created what they call a quantum system on chip using tin vacancies. This may sound like they're hiring at the Flat Earth Society, but it's not cranks which are missing, it's atoms. You see, they take a diamond, so a lattice of carbon atoms, and they sprinkle tin atoms on it. Then they remove some of the tin atoms and that creates the tin vacancy. It's basically a hole with quantum properties. The nice thing is now that these quantum properties can be changed with electromagnetic radiation, microwaves for example, and they can be entangled with each other with that too. So the tin vacancies are qubits and you can compute with them. For the new paper, they've created an example module with about 1000 qubits. It has interconnectors so that you can in principle join them together. Remember, we need to get to a million or so qubits so that it'd be at least 1000 of these modules. Sounds good, but this system still needs to be cooled to 4 Kelvin. That's much warmer than the millikelvins of superconducting circuits but not exactly room temperature, unless you ask my husband. The nice thing about this approach to quantum computing is that the tin vacancy qubits are really small, literally the size of single atoms, so you can pack them very densely, which requires less space. Since these lattices are not perfectly regular, each of these vacancies responds at a somewhat different set of frequencies. This is great because it allows the researchers to target individual qubits more easily. But in their tests, they report about a 10% error rate, which would be pretty good at the Flat Earth Society, but in computing, that's really high. Then again, this is basically their first attempt, so one expects further improvements. The other new scaling approach is for photonic computing and comes from the company Psi Quantum. Photonic computing, as the name says, works with tonic water. Just checking if you're listening. It works with photons. Photons, the quanta of light. Psi Quantum has published design plans for an entire computing platform that uses single photons. Unbelievable as that sounds. It's also a modular approach and consists of individual segments that can be joined. It comes with a single photon source and a single photon detector, so it's a complete system, including readout. But this platform too runs at only a few degrees Kelvin. Psi Quantum research 
recently got a huge funding boost and at the moment they're one of the hottest, if not the hottest, quantum computing firm out there. They have partnered up with the semiconductor company Global Foundries to produce their quantum chips. So this is getting really serious, people. Most impressively, they report a fidelity of more than 99.9% for the state preparation and measurement of their modular chips. This basically means that the computer does what they want it to do, generally a good thing. They have also demonstrated that they can link multiple chips together. I need to mention though that while photonic computing is very promising, there are some operations that are difficult to implement with light. This is why some researchers are not comfortable with calling them truly universal quantum computers, as there might be some algorithms that they can't execute. That said, I'm really impressed. Maybe I've been too pessimistic about quantum computers and they're just around the corner. Then we can mine Bitcoin twice as fast. I can't wait. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. Brilliant.org offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Some even have executable Python scripts or videos with little demonstration experiments. Whether you want to know more about large language models or quantum computing, want to learn coding in Python or know how computer memory works, Brilliant has you covered. And they're adding new courses each month. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.